May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. There is a question that comes up a lot in our history, in, and especially today. What does it mean to be a Christian? What can Christians do? What can Christians not do? What must Christians do? And especially in this political season, we hear people saying, oh, you must vote. If you're a faithful person, you must vote, and then they'll give you away. As though there is only one way to see faith, because they have defined what is a Christian in a very small box. A Christian is people who think this. I, I wonder all the time what Jesus would say if he had known how many Christians would kill other Christians over the course of our history. Um, between Catholics and Protestants, I've even heard in the last year somebody say to me, are you Catholic or are you Christian? As those, those are different things. And I think what small boxes people make to put Jesus in. We made a decision at this church, for instance, decades ago, that our understanding of love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, meant that we respected the dignity of every human being, and we welcomed and encouraged members of the LGBT community to come here and worship and know Christ and to be fully accepted into the body of Christ. We did not say, if you have chosen a lifestyle or if you have um, some problem, we didn't, we didn't invite people in to fix them. We invited them in to walk with us in the way of Christ, all of us knowing that we need forgiveness, all of us knowing that we are not perfect, all of us walking and saying, you are made as fully in the image of Christ as I am, that there is no difference that Jesus welcomes all. We have a sign in front of our church that said, that says everyone is welcome. And that means, of course, that we can't have a very, very narrow definition of Christian or what it means to follow Christ because certainly that would not include everyone. It includes some people who are already following Christ. It includes some people who may want to follow Christ and haven't figured that out yet. It includes some people who are here because their significant other follows Christ and they're just hanging around. And they're all welcome. They're all welcome to be in here, to be part of the journey, to consider the words, to love the music, to enjoy the art, to be here and to hear and to be welcomed and to be loved. That's what we think it means to be a Christian. We believe that to be a Christian means to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And of course, coming in the door and sitting in the pew doesn't make you a Christian. There's a, a joke that goes around all the time. You can stand in your garage, it won't make you a car. And the same is true with Christianity. Coming to church isn't the answer. It is following Jesus. It is, it is wanting to know God, it is to walk in a certain way. And I, I didn't put the book away because I wanted to go back and say what Jesus said. When Jesus talked about what it means to be a lover of God, what it means to be a follower, he said, these are people who are poor in spirit and they mourn for those who mourn and they're meek and they hunger and thirst for righteousness. He said they are pure in heart and that they are peacemakers. He said that they are willing to be persecuted for righteousness sake and that they are willing to be reviled for their beliefs. Now I want you to understand one thing. Those aren't different kinds of people. They're not some who are meek and some who are mourned. That is the body together. That is the church in its wholeness. That we are people who, who are willing to be persecuted. We're willing to be called wrong. We're not willing to give up love 
in order to be thought right by somebody else, to have whatever power that might give us. We're not willing to turn our backs on people who are, are weak, are poor, or hungry, because they won't give us power, because we're doing it from love, not for a desire. The only desire that we should strive for is the desire to love Jesus, the desire to follow more closely in Jesus' steps. At the end of our service, we will sing, or actually Ron will sing, as, as we do every week, um, this, this prayer that we will seek the Lord, that we will try to be, walk more closely with what the Lord asks us to do. And it's not about the election, and it's not about being right on every issue. It is about being loving. Now, one of the really important things about being loving that people sometimes overlook is that it's not a static response. What is loving to one person is not loving to another. There are people that you know who desire you to hug them as tight as you can. And there are other people who desire to nod at you from across the room, preferably six feet away, maybe 12. And that's before COVID. That was just who they were. There are people who would be delighted if you brought them a chocolate cake. And there are other people for whom chocolate cake is an abomination. They would never want such a thing. So the first part of loving, if you're going to love somebody, is you need to be in relationship with them. You need to know them. You need to know what it is to love. So as we are striving to know God more clearly, to more, more closely, more deeply, more fully, to have God fill us, if we're going to love our neighbor as ourselves, we must know our neighbor as well. To know the communities who are around us, not just the ones in our household, and not just the ones who look just like us, and not the ones who speak the same language we do and not the same ones who are in the same economic class, and not the same people who have the same sexual orientation or political orientation, or even whether or not they um, believe our political beliefs. But people who are our neighbors that we're called to love, that is what it is. It's not about a static set of beliefs. It's not about a creed, though we will say the creed in a moment, and I like the creed. But it's not the, it doesn't encompass the fullness and fulsomeness of being Christian. To be Christian is to intentionally walk in love with God, with your neighbor, with the world. Ready to be corrected, ready to stand firm, and ready in meekness to meet all the things that come at us, even pandemics, with love and with hope and with faith.